years of life. Those who are in the switches are being formed from experience of care. And when they're not established well, then you end up with a person that easily gets stressed out. and stressed. Very profound. Stay there. I want to give you the floor when we come back to talk about the uh, young that you are such an expert at. Wow. We're on the march. The Empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. General, what do you think about the FBI saying that there's a terror alert on Monday about a potential Fort Hood situation? The police are shoving people, shoving Alex, shoving the crowd. Here we go, folks. I'm being assaulted. Whether it's the radio show, the news websites, documentary films, or the nightly news, InfoWars is the tip of the spear. Is this another false flag stage attack to take our civil liberties and put more homeland security by sticking their hands down on the pants on the streets? It's up to us to set brush fires in the minds of men and women everywhere. And that's what PrisonPlanet.tv is designed Designed to do. You watch the Assad regime is going to be blamed or accused of using chemical weapons against the so-called rebels. What we see now is a war against reality. It's a war against the truth. It's more vital than ever that supporters of freedom become members of PrisonPlanet.tv and share their membership with up to 11 friends and family. Visit InfoWarsNews.com today. Become a member, share your membership, and help take the InfoWar to the next level. The globalist social engineers are not just targeting us with propaganda. They are manipulating our genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen mimickers that lower our testosterone and other hormones and natural compounds that the body needs. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula sourced from powerful organic herbs and then concentrated for maximum potency. Super Male Vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals. Super Male Vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose. For a limited time, we are offering 15% off Super Male Vitality at InfoWarsLife.com to introduce you to this powerful supplement. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your Super Male Vitality. InfoWarsLife.com a chemical spill contaminating the water supply in nine West Virginia counties. This year alone, over 300,000 people in West Virginia had their drinking water contaminated. What are the health effects of having these drugs in our drinking water? It's forced medical treatment without the consent of residents. My friends, water filtration is one of the most basic actions you can take to protect you and your family from the harmful toxins and heavy metals in your tap water. On average, the county says it sprays with the glyphosate at least once a week. Few filters cut out the glyphosate that is found in water supply worldwide. Remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, hydrofluorosilicic acid, sodium hexafluorosilicate. Fluoride, it is in tea, it's in coffee, it's in water, it's in bread, it's in toothpaste. It is our responsibility to protect our families. The establishment's not going to do it. It's time to take action. It's time to filter our water. Visit InfoWarsStore.com and use promo code WATER to get 10% off their entire family of incredible products. Or call toll-free 888-253-3139. Take you live to the Central Texas Command Center and the heart of the resistance. It's Alex Jones. Professor Darsha Narvaez is our guest, and she is a uh, prominent behavioral psychologist at the University of Notre Dame, Notre Dame, and she has developed several. Um, Theories, adaptive, ethical. Well, we're going to go over all of her theories with her so that I don't butcher them here. But she deals with basically neurobiology, clinical development, education sciences uh, in her uh, developed projects and research about moral development. I don't need to be a rocket scientist to know that if people don't hold their babies and take them places with them, and teach them how to cook and teach them how to sweep and teach them how to fish and teach them how to hunt and teach them how to communicate and teach them how to be charming and teach them how to sew and teach them how to play football, that people don't develop. There's less language now. 
Um, I've seen the studies out about the different types of formula. The brains don't develop. They don't even weigh as much as our ancestors. And then you look at the social engineers on record wanting a manageable population. We're raised by television. Our bones are much smaller. I've got a, a BBC article out dealing with that today. Just because we watch so much television, and I'll show TV viewers that article in a moment. Uh, here's one out of the Daily Mail. How modern humans have become weaklings compared with our ancient ancestors who could outrun and outlive today's top athletes. Just a regular person that they dug up out of a field uh, in Cambridge, England could just absolutely pull the arm out of the socket of the current Cambridge University students. We are degenerating, ladies and gentlemen, and a lot of it's social engineering, a lot of it's just the modern world, but certainly the political classes have been accentuating this. We've had a lot of white papers on air we've covered. I'm not saying that's the professor's views, we'll get her views. Professor, I'm gonna give you the floor, or I'll just run wild with this, uh, but uh, please, Professor, uh, when I watched you with Stefan Molyneux, you broke down what the studies show with epigenetics uh, not being triggered uh, or the good genes not being triggered or the, the other genes being triggered, the genes that are more associated with uh, not being successful, I guess, to, to uh, boil it down, when we don't spend proper time with our babies. Uh, and so you've got the floor to break this down for people. Okay, thanks. Well, we're studying right now the effects of parenting and the context of early life on early child development. So we're looking at a set of practices that evolved 30 million years ago with the social mammals and that humans only intensified further because as we evolved to walk on two legs instead of four limbs, uh, our pelvises had to shrink in order to enable that. And so the babies had to be born a little more helpless. And so we're born with only 25% of the brain in place, and most of that grows in the first five years of life. Uh, it doesn't finish till the third decade, like age 25. Some people say 35 now. So that's the, all the good thinking and planning and foresight stuff. But in those first years then, um, babies are born, according uh, when we compare to other animals, 9 to 18 months early, which means those not months, really, the baby should be treated almost like they're still in the womb. So you want to keep them not getting distressed because during that time, the stress response systems of various kinds are being established. And if you distress the baby frequently, those the thresholds and the, the kind of set points for those systems are going to be at a very hyperactive state, which means what happens when the stress response kicks in is that it draws blood away from your higher order thinking skills, away from your orientation to other people, your compassion, and mobilizes you for action, either to fight, to run away, or to just freeze if you can't do those things, or even faint away. So it gets, makes you very self-focused, and you get personally distressed easily. So we're looking at the parenting practices and how they affect then that brain development. And when you don't get touched, like you were saying, uh, pretty much constantly in the first year of life, that's when all this stuff is being established to be good and uh, it work well. Uh, then you can actually develop a more hyperactive reaction to life and new situations. And we know from the rat studies that Michael Meany and his lab has done, and you might get him on, uh, but they've done uh, studies for 20 years, and they show that if you have a high-nurturing rat mother in the first 10 days of life, she turns on th hundreds of genes, perhaps thousands of genes, by her care, uh, and they, they focus in on one uh, in particular, and they find that if you have a low nurturing mother during that time, that means you're not getting licked if you're a rat, but if you're a human, it would be held, uh, and if you don't have a high nurturing mother at that time, those genes never get turned on properly. So for the rest of your life, you're gonna be anxious with new things. So these genes need touch to be turned on to control anxiety, if you don't get that, you're going to be an anxious rat. But we, they've also then transferred this to looking at the same processes, the, the neurobiological processes in humans, and find uh, similar uh, things happening. So that's just touch. And then there's breast milk. You mentioned that. Breast milk has thousands of ingredients, and it builds a good brain with a lot of serotonin receptors, so, uh, which are linked to not getting depressed. It has all the things you need to build your immune system. And so in our... Uh, what we do is we use, uh, I'm, so I'm jumping around a little bit, but I'm going to tell you about these practices. And the way we know um, that humans have actually followed these practices is we looked at anthropology research. 
And there's small band hunter-gatherers. These are little societies of nomadic foragers. They have no possessions, essentially. And they, uh, they migrate to food areas. Uh, they uh, really represent our 99% of human history were in these kinds of societies. And in those societies, they do these parenting practices that I'm going to tell you about. And it turns out they're really kind of smart and intelligent and more perceptive. They see better, hear better. Um, it's just kind of amazing. Um, and they have much more peaceful personalities as well. They don't get so easily distressed. Or when you do that, you probably perish out there in the, in the forest or jungle if you couldn't control yourself. So what are these practices? So these practices that we see in these uh, small band hunter-gatherers are the ones that we're examining in our, my laboratory. And we're finding they're related to child development, their intelligence, their empathy, their conscience, their self-regulation, whether they're depressed or aggressive, they're all related to these practices. So they are touch, as I mentioned, pretty constantly and, and available hugging affection um, in early life. Responsiveness to the needs of the baby, so you don't let them cry. Crying babies are killing synapses. It's undermining development. It's, um, touch is another one um, uh, that I should just say that when a baby's not touched, they will be they will stop growing. They, you can see this in the severe neglect cases, but it means the DNA synthesis starts to slow down. So if you want a nice, healthy baby, you've got to carry them around uh, until they want to walk around themselves. And then we have uh, free play. Um, so babies are ready to play from birth. You can see this in videos that Colin Trevartan has, has uh, captured. They're ready to communicate back and forth, and they want to spend their life doing that. So uh, that builds the brain. It builds a very smart, intelligent, socially skilled person. Um, multiple adult caregivers. Babies need lots of care. This is not enough. Uh, one person is not enough. One mom, one dad, and mom. Two people, not enough. You need the village. And we've kind of undermined that in our society at the moment. Also soothing perinatal experiences. So no separating the mom and baby at birth. No inducement of pain that is remembered in the brain. The baby's first impressions of life are going to be forever stamped in their personality. And then, correct me if I'm wrong, it then access all of the racial memories of pain and starts putting them on that path. Right. So they get more self-protected. So what happens is the brain sort of shuts itself down. It starts to filter life according to those threatening things. And that's what makes you less intelligent. It makes you less flexible. It makes you less... And then adapt. you can be in a nanny state that programs you with the fake fears it puts out. Oh, you're more susceptible to all that. Yeah. Well, please continue. Amazing. Please continue. Right. So what happens is you build a... a you, you, you kind of... When your parents or your caregivers don't attend to you as the baby, you know, and say, hi, you know, and interact with you, you kind of learn and they send you off to your crib by yourself, cry it out. You learn that, you know, the world is not a safe place. So you're going to just trust everything that's sort of basic in your personality. And you're also going to learn that, you know, you don't get much pleasure from being with other people. So you're going to do your own thing, which, you know, can also... Sometimes that's okay, but sometimes it's very destructive. People, you know, are very detached from relationships. Sure, bottom line, what you break down in your writings is, because I've read some of them now, and, and you see it as common sense, as prima facie what you're saying, that people are not talking as much, their IQs are going down, the vocabulary is going down, we're not as healthy, uh, we're more stressed out. This modern system is basically killing us. Right, and let me clarify in the IQ thing. IQ scores over the 20th century in the USA went up, um, and when you add, and that's called the Flynn effect. And Flynn wrote a book about this in 2007, and he says, "Well, let's look at that. What is it that changed over time? What got? What did people get better at? It's answering hypothetical questions, scientific kind of thinking, detached from your, you know, what's going on now, detached from your emotions. So we've been increasing that kind of IQ, while emotional IQ, the ability to be flexible and socially responsive in the moment, has been plummeting. And so you can see now, I see in my students, they prefer to text rather than the face-to-face, -face, you know, eye contact, back and forth stuff. Oh, That's people sit at tables and text each other now. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, IQ. So I think we're getting less intelligent uh, in comparison to our small band hunter gatherers. All the, the the stories, you know, Jared Diamond has written a book about um, what we can learn from ancient societies, 
And uh, one of his uh, earlier books, he said, you know, that he thought the Papua New Guineans, who he studied extensively, were much smarter than we were, but they didn't have.